You're live. Yeah, I'm always ready. Uh, what were some of these slang terms you guys were discussing? Bet. Lit. Throwing shade on me. On fleek. Cap. No cap. What are Dub. what do these mean? I think cap means I right, then. No, ain't the truth. Like ain't the truth. So how yeah. would you use it? So you say, like if you was Boy, to tell me to kill that turkey, no cap. Yeah, yeah. If you were to say to me, I'm a better turkey hunter than you, and I would say cap. And then you'd be like, no cap. Where who says this? People on the street, man. You don't know about the street life? No. Out in the streets, man. Street thugs. Is this man. like is this like the we language about the it, cool kids, the cool cats, the on fleek? Is this like the language you would have to use, like if you went down to that freaking booth down there on, off the side of the road in the rough part of town and wanted to get you an Obama phone? Oh yeah. This is yeah. how you would have they'd to talk. Be like, they'd be like, yo, you want a phone and you'd be like, bet. Okay. And, that, and then they hand, they'd hand you phone. Yeah. 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 I figured I saw that little tent that's set up down yeah. there. They do an iPads too. You can get a phone and an iPad. Thank that, you, That's Obama. freaking insane, dude. Yeah. An iPad. That's freaking insane. Yeah. Or maybe it's just a tablet. You Blake, know, I call all tablets iPads. Yeah, what tablet. what's that play? What's Tab, that I part of it. town <laughs> called, Blake? Where at? Where you ride through, you know, like going out toward mom and them's house, that rough part of town. Yeah, I'd call that East Rome. Yeah. That's what they call it. Um, but like Dean Avenue down there by the uh the car dealership there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The whole, the whole street Rome. just needs to be leveled. It's just yeah. a freaking cesspool, man. But that car lot's like a high end used car lot. Yeah, they seem like yeah. I, I stopped in there the other day and looked at a tundra. Yeah, they seem <laughs> like good people, but once you get past that car lot, it's just a freaking cesspool, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's always some type of elementary school in the middle of those places. Yeah. Yeah, there's one right there. It's isn't weird, it? ain't it? There's uh -huh. always an elementary school in in those places. Yeah. Strange. What, what's the roughest part? What's the roughest area in Rome, Blake? After all your years of enforcing uh, the law. I'd say South Rome. Where is that? It's like uh, South. going out toward Edgar's and stuff. For real? Yeah, I mean, you know, he's kind of on the outskirts of it, but you know that if you were not to take that weird little right turn, if you come in, you know, down um, past like where Kelsey and them are, and if you were to veer to the left, down where Allen's got all his rental homes, oh, Cave Ca Springs, Cave Springs, Cave Springs, Creek. Cave Springs yeah, it's pretty Creek. rough down in there. I've never, I don't reckon I've ever been down there. Mm -hmm. Huh. Yeah. And then... What West Rome is where all the Mexicans are, ain't it? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, they're all they've got there. a little freaking Mexico mm. down there. Like Dalton, Georgia. Dude, yeah, and then East Rome's yeah, Dalton, just you. Dalton is just Dalton is dude, we rode through Dalton on our bikes during T and G A. And like I've only drove through Dalton a time or two, but when we were riding through there on a bike, I was like, Holy crow, <laughs> this place is is I mean, it's total freaking crap. How'd you know about that, Chili? I live up there. Not in Dalton. Close. It's total crap, man. I got all it's kinds of doings carpet in Dalton. capital of the world, man. Yeah, man. Well, I think it was. Is, is it still? Is Dalton bussing? <laughs> no, food's bussing. Oh. Like when you put it in your mouth and eat it, instead of saying, that's good, you say bussing. What about Riz? I don't know what that is. What about my drip? Now, yeah. You, you keep a drip. Chilly I've heard that. I, I heard that yeah. from that little fat kid on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> Chili keeps a drill. Looks like a basset hound. He, Chili, <laughs> Chili cap locks his drill. Yeah. Cap. My drip be busting cap lock. <laughs> this is the debt. You guys are discussing the degradation of humanity. The people of, that drive the, the people that say that drive them uh, trucks with the back lowered way down and the front way up. And a light bar. Yeah. That's the people that talk like that. I heard that the Panama City Police was putting the kibosh on that. That's called the Carolina Squat. And when they had spring break the other week, they said the police was putting the kibosh on them squatted trucks, mm. just writing them tickets left and right. I didn't know you weren't allowed to do that. Now you can't. You can't modify your suspension and whatnot. 
really, if they was a police that wanted to be like a super police, you know, one of those, don't you? I, I do. <laughs> and if you listen and we talking about you, <laughs> <laughs> you, you <laughs> I mean, you could pull over every four wheel drive truck left and right. Man. I think really? I've heard that before. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It ain't supposed to be modified. I think like over two inches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, would you agree that overall humans are devolving? Like on the micro level, I, obviously I don't believe in macro evolution. I don't believe in a kind of species turning into another kind of species. But we're talking about, you know, we, we've, we've in, intellectually, we've kind of made adaptations to our environment and became, you know, a little more intellectually in, advanced over you know, the course of thousands of years as we've, you know, figured things out. But would you agree that just humanity, well, no, let's say America, humans, American citizens are just like devolving in terms of intellect and, and, uh, character. And I mean, speech to me is a big indicator. Oh, I, it's like, if, if you can't, if you cannot speak clearly, and and use proper language, descriptive language, like that's a that's an indicator of intellectual devolving. Yeah, that's that's what's interesting. All them slang things have no no description to them at all. Like bussin is good, and bet is yes, and cap is that's fake. Like it, you you look. You, hey, I'm sure you've read some of the Foxfire books, right? Yeah, and all the Appalachian terms that was considered slang, they were descriptive, but they were looked at as hillbillies and didn't have no sense like that. Side goggling mean crooked or something. The word side goggling to me sounds like something could be crooked. When they explained the turkey's gobble, it was chobba lobba lob. You know, they just instead of saying gobble, they said that thing was chobbing. Well, it sounds like he chobba lobba lobbing up there on the tree. All their words were descriptive, but now this communication it ain't descriptive it's just i don't know what it is yeah it's it's not good well i've got two things do you think the advancement of technology has simply made it easier to be dumber or it has created an environment to where it's almost a necessity to be to adapt to being t dumber. Well, has it made it easier to be dumb? Yes. yes. But it's also created an environment to where if you, if you so choose to rely solely on the technology that is available, it creates an environment where you become dumber. Like th that's, that's the thing, man. Why, why, so people, their intellect in terms of their speech and their vocabulary, their vocabulary is so low because they don't read. People don't freaking read anymore. Like they just watch a video. They don't read. And that's, in my opinion, the number one thing to expand your vocabulary and your knowledge of words and descriptive words that you can use in order to talk Reading is the number one thing that does that. Right. Nobody freaking reads anymore, dude. If you don't read, you are an idiot. There's a lot of people that don't ever read. Yeah, I mean, like, oh, like, like I, I know people personally in my family who who probably have not read a. The, these people are fifty and sixty. 65 years old, they haven't read a freaking book since the last time they had to in grade school. Like, seriously. They'll admit it, too. That's mind-boggling to me, dude. What the crap is wrong with you, man? Yeah, I think it is interesting how we learn any words. It's not by reading because we learn how to speak before we can read. But I do think there's a furtherance of knowledge garnership through reading. I think well, when if you, you don't read and you just listen, you're not ever investigating 
or seeking out to understand something better. Really, when you read, you're exposed to words that are not in your vocabulary, and then you have you could to figure be from listening to somebody too, but. and then you have to figure out what they mean, and you have to figure out what they mean because you have to fit them into the the context of what you're reading. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so you are you saying you believe that this slang talk is an adaptation going in reverse? Yes. Like I can't communicate, so I'm just going to. I'm going to make something up. I'm going to make up up. some sound. Yeah. Just some cap. But that that is how language does evolve. I mean, that's how language got to the point wherever you were last okay with it, is it was evolving and changing and, and growing and new words were being created. And like we've not all, there's not a finite amount of words. That like, okay, we've got 15,000. If you add to it or take it away, you're a dummy. You know, it's like, no, I mean, you may have 16,000 words later and either wasn't always 15,000 words. It's just, I don't know when, like there had to be an origin of every word. Well, I, I would say intellect is measured upon your ability to use the words that are established to mean what they're supposed to mean in the English language. But somebody created bussing. Yeah. A freaking retard. (laughs) He probably created that because he got off the freaking bus down there to get his Obama phone. And all he could think about was how bad his life sucked because he has to ride a bus everywhere. But then he was excited because he got that phone. Because he he got this this is bussing. No, he he was excited about the phone. But then when he realized he was going to get a new iPad with the phone, then he said, this is (laughs) bussing. This is what bussing is all about. Have you ever created a word? I don't know. I no, I, I mean, dude, I've I got don't a know, whole man. subset of language, man. It's just, it's, it's, um, it's hopeless, man. <laughs> I don't think I see that quite like you do the slang terms. I think there's always been slang and it's always changing. I get, well, I just think it's one indicator that mankind is getting stupider. Like, I think we could probably identify many other indicators. <laughs> yeah. Mankind is getting stupider, lazier, less self-sufficient. Lazy is the crux of it. Because being yeah. being more lazy than allows you to be. But it, even, even to not speak properly is a sign of laziness. Can be. Well, for, for sure it is. Yeah. What do you think are the effects of this new language cat bus and drip riz what are the effects I, I i mean i think the better question is what are, what are the effects of the the majority of our population in the united states becoming stupider yeah it's the weakening the effects are the weakening of the fabric of our culture the weakening of of every aspect of our culture well the dumber we become and the lazier we become the more subservient we become yeah. And I'm not sure that whatever you want to say, the powers that be care how dumb or lazy you are inherently. They care how subservient you are. And being dumber and lazier makes you more likely to submit mm-hmm. to tyranny. The dumber you are, the lazier you are, the broke that causes you to be freaking broke. You don't have anything. So then you need somebody to take care of you. And so then you turn to your your government to take care of you. Yeah. So, you know, at one time, the word dude was slang, Mm -hmm. you know, and I guess maybe it was associated with the stoner, surfer, California, what was it, Spicoli type individual. Uh, But that's a common word now. Well, yeah, this this has been happening. Yeah. And like, I'm not saying that I'm immune to this. Yeah, but I've I've heard you say dude a hundred times. Yeah. To my, I mean, to me, you even don't sound, cool, man, that's cool. Yeah. You don't sound stupid saying it. Yeah. That's you because know? we're not, none of us are as smart as we could be, including me. You think, you think you'd be smarter if you didn't say dude? Yeah. I mean, l- so listen to, listen to somebody like Jordan Peterson, for instance, listen to the way he talks. He's very articulate. He uses actual words that can be defined within the, the proper English language. Like he's an, he's an intellectual, um, human being. Like he, 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 he shows through his speech that he is smarter than me. 
because I've been affected by this too. I'm not saying that I that I haven't that I haven't on some level devolved with the rest of American citizens because I'm I'm guilty of it too. I partake in this stinking technology. Uh, I I don't read as much as I should, as much as I would have to have read if I wanted to find things out 50 years ago. You know, I, I'm what. Corn. I, uh, uh, I mean, maybe so. Maybe it shows that I'm so stupid. I have no patience, and I want to hear the rapid, you know, slang or whatever. Because when Jordan Peterson talks, I do agree. He sounds very intelligent. He's way more articulate than I'll ever be. But I want to take a grappling hook, throw it inside of his mouth, and pull his words out. Because to me, it sounds like he's having a hard time getting them out, and he speaks so slow to me. Well, I, I don't think that if Jordan Peterson started using bussin and drip, that that would make him less intelligent. It might make him appear less intelligent. There he ain't go. got yeah. now drill. He ain't got now drill. You ain't seen his suit? He ain't got now drill. I, I, I like the way he dresses. I'm not sure that that that. I mean, I can see you you saying, well, that would that would show that he seemed less intelligent, but I don't think it would mean he was. Well, you might be right. I see what you're saying. Because he could choose to start talking how, however, but that's not going to change his level of intelligence, but it may change how he's seen or how he comes across or how he appears because everybody may have a tendency to say certain things, but you can choose to, you could choose to not say anything like dude, this whole podcast. Mm -hmm. That, that would be a good choice to make. It would be a good choice to identify the slang terms that you use in your language and replace them with more accurate descriptive words that fit the traditional English language. I love thinking about language, man. I know. It's a strange thing. What are the origins of language? Yeah, it's a strange thing. Yeah, when, it, it, when did that it, start? It, we just start clucking? I mean, all different cultures, have, like Appalachia, Appalachia, its own language in and of itself. It, it, the, the, the South in period compared to the North back in the day, the language was a lot different. Oh, Slang yeah. terms, regular terms, everything. Yeah. I think it's culturally diverse in and of the it's going to be different regardless of your social status regardless of the area that you that you live and it's going to be looked down and frowned upon by others that's human nature mm -hmm. human nature yeah you're I, right i can't stand to hear the the kids say bro like come on bro come on bro but i'm sure when i was their age i was saying dude you know what's up dude it's, 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 I think it's way even deeper than people getting stupid. I think it's just culturally diverse for everyone. Yeah. The, um, have you ever, I, I mean, I haven't done any, I, I don't know how long it's been since I've read the account of the Tower of Babel. Well, yeah, that's it's been a long time. But there's got to be something there. Oh, yeah. I think about that all the time and then how it relates it to the flood. But like, go from the origins of man. They, the language looked a lot different than ours looks now, but a language went from there not being one to de, it began to develop and beginning to develop. I can only imagine it was looking at things and then making a sound with your mouth and then that becoming, you don't think, you don't think language was given to Adam by God in well, the beginning. Well, that's what I wonder. I don't know. Uh, well, well because, that, that's, because, a, that's a good point. Because, because how much would have, have been given? Would he have been given the full scope of language? Well, or? because he did sit and he did sit with God and choose names for things that were created on the earth. That's what I'm saying. I don't think nothing was given to him. I think I think it's a process of going around and, and looking at a a rock and going yeah, rock uh -huh. with your mouth. And then it's like that'll work. I would like to know what is the oldest known language. Like in in known human history, at least for as as what we can, what we can look at, and at least I don't know if you could actually even prove it. Yeah, would you call it Hebrew? Theorize as the oldest. What is the oldest known language? Looking that up, Blake. Well, right off the rip, Google says Sumerian. 
That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sumerian, Akkadian, and Egyptian are the oldest mm -hmm. languages with the clear written record. And see, that's hieroglyphs. All three are extinct and they're no longer used. Don't have any living descendants that can carry the language to the next generation. Yeah, I think it depends on what you're considering the first language too, because I'm just saying what's the oldest that we think we know about. Well, yeah, that it's probably not the actually the oldest. Well, you know, the Sumerian text and Egyptian hieroglyph, like Blake's saying, but that may not classify in the same way that, that other things do now, like <laughs> more modern languages. It's 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 tough because I go back to the beginning of man. How did that develop? Really? And how did it stick? And how did you remember it? And then how did you have bring other people into the world that then you communicated those things that you had made to them and then that stuck with them and then it became established because you both knew it. And languages has to be a common agreed upon thing. Like we're just making sounds with our mouths right now. And if I was making these same sounds and nobody, y'all didn't know what I'm, you didn't agree upon what this formation of syllables was representing and meaning well then we wouldn't it wouldn't be a language we wouldn't it's be communicating i'd just be going blah, blah, blah. it's weird man. but i could also do blah, 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 and then that means something to you yeah like a vietnamese that is just a bunch of clicks and blah, pops blah, blah, but blah. what's interesting about that is if you was like if you was at uh whatever restaurant and somebody said bet to you and you said what are you talking about? They would explain what they was talking about in the words we've been using for hundreds of years. But then, the, but then Blake would never ask that again. Right. You're then right. He could yeah. start using bet. Mm -hmm. And he probably would. And then he would go, do, <laughs> and then he would go do that to somebody else who didn't know what it meant. And he would explain it to them. And then they would go, all right, bet. Well, I don't like it. I don't like it. One, one iota. See, oh, somebody don't know what iota means. You're going to have to explain that. Speaking of Egypt, I, I, what do you, how do you really think they built them pyramids, man? I, I, right. want, I want to know what y'all think about that. Mm. I've, been, I've been pondering on that. I mean, how? You know what I think it had something to do with? <laughs> I think in 01. <laughs> wow. I mean, there's a lot of speculation around this, but, I mean, we've just all been... I mean, the traditional narrative is that the Egyptians were able to construct these pyramids basically using slave labor, and they were mm -hmm. hauling these, these, you know, stones that were, I don't know, I don't know what they, what they estimate the heaviest stone in the, in the pyramid is, but like they were quarrying them and then hauling them and then lifting them into place to form this essentially perfect structure that's aligned perfectly and has withstood thousands of years of existence. Like and per, the uh, Egyptologists estimate the stones to weigh two and a half tons. Yeah. The largest stone or are they all around the same size? Oh, well, that's the average. Okay. Um, so two and a half tons, that's uh, what, 5,000 pounds? It says yeah. um, 8,000 tons of granite were imported from Aswan, located more than 800 kilometers away. Yeah. <laughs> You've probably looked at some of this, Corn uh, Randall Carlson. The largest weighed Hancock. 25 mm -hmm. to 80 tons. 25 to 80 tons. Quarried and moved 800K. Yeah. Graham Hancock and Randall Carlson talk a lot about Egypt and but I've never listened to much about the pyramids, but I, I don't, the thing about Egypt is there's, there's other pyramids like it in the world. Yeah. And no one talks about that. China, there's huge pyramids that are geometrically perfect and face North and East and West and South perfectly. And they were made long, long, long ago in other parts of the world. They're all over the place. Why? But but explain how any of them got there, not just Egypt, because the same, not necessarily the same method, but you would think the same method was used because it's from the same time period. It's cross-cultural and they're huge and have well, huge stones. There ain't but so many different ways that man could move a 25 ton stone, 800 kilometers across the surface of the earth. I mean, <laughs> I, I can't think of a, 
Well, I, I guess it could be done. It would just take a lot of people and a long time. Well, do you how how much are you under the impression that we've had technology that we've lost? Well, that's what I think. I think they might have had more like we think they had these rudimentary versions of because you see some of the other things that they had and like the way metal was like I saw a thing the other day, it was some kind of metal wheel thing mm -hmm. that was bent like perfectly and i mean it was it was nuts and who knows whether it's really from when they say it was from but yeah. it was definitely old uh -huh. and so i i wonder if they didn't have more technology than we think they had what if if we had a freaking flood the earth again what evidence would there be of the technology that we currently have i wonder yeah i mean we have a flood it freaking just abs just wrecks crap and then thousands of years pass. What are we going to find evidence that we had iPhones and, and look, computers? And look, dude, if you gave me an infinite budget, if you gave me all the money on earth and and five and 5,000 years of life, I couldn't make this. I tend to think that's I, I, correct. I, I couldn't, I couldn't make this. <laughs> so do you, Okay, do you think iPhones and or the pyramids were non you don't think humans did it? That's one option. That's one route to go down. It is strange, man, because I so I did a I did a little um one of my unexplained Bible account episodes yesterday on YouTube. Thank you guys for watching and commenting by the way. Uh like I told you guys on that video, YouTube is dropping the hammer on this channel, man. I don't know why. They're dropping the hammer on the channel though. Yep. They're demonetizing all sorts of stuff. They're they're not letting you guys like the videos. They're unsubscribing people from the channel. I don't know what spurred it on or what started it. So uh that being said, we need your support. Share the freaking videos if you get something out of them, man. Share it with somebody. All right. But I was doing that and obviously looking at Genesis six. And and you look, man, you can only draw so many conclusions from what is written. And anything other than that is just speculation. So you could speculate and say that these, these offspring that were being produced by way of these angels and human women, the, the Bible describes them as men of renown, well-known well-respected, people looked up to them. They were giants in stature. Um, they were mighty men. They, they were, they were. I think intellectually and physically uh, more um, superior, or they were superior to created man uh, physically and intellectually. I think we can draw that conclusion from the text. So, I wonder if these individuals were not helping created man design and develop technology back then that was then wiped out. But if that technology existed, Noah and his family would have been exposed to it. They would have known about it. So portions of that technology, or at least the ideas or the concept of it would have survived the flood in the knowledge and the minds of Noah and his family. So it could have just, kind of restarted and at least the ideas were still there yeah it was interesting to me I, as i did that study it was interesting to me we we all we look at well why did god choose noah and his family to save them from the flood and i've always thought well because noah was one of the few maybe the only person left on earth who was serving god worshiping god and it, the text tells us it says noah walked with god right so that's one reason. But then right after that, it says, and Noah was perfect in all of his generations, meaning Noah's bloodline had not been tainted by this union of these angelic beings and humans. His genetics were still pure. And I believe that's another reason that God chose Noah and his family to save them and bring them through the flood in order to restart humanity because his genetic code was still pure and untainted and maybe there were only a few like him left but 
could that technological advancement from the old world, I mean, could that be where it came from? I don't, I, I don't know. Uh, then why did we lose it? I mean, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure how. I, I'm just curious as to, because I would you think. check that thermostat corn? Oh, boy. I, I would think it's. I just want to know if if we if you destroyed the earth to whatever degree it has been destroyed again and then what would we what remnants would we have left? What artifacts would we dig up thousands of years from now? I mean, you're not digging up an iPhone, an untouched iPhone. You would dig up parts of things that would give you clues about what we had and but well in the scale that the like the amount of those things we have are probably far more than maybe what they had then. You, so that would be huge, yeah. You would think of like heavy equipment like yeah. dozers and backhoes and as many of those and as big as they are like you would find those things but you know but how much of how much things are buried deep that we've built things over that we would never search yeah i mean how much of the earth now that we when we search for artifacts is not searched i mean nothing is it's oh, small yeah. tiny portions well think of the whole desert i mean the way the sand's always changing and layering think on of top the bottom and, of the ocean yeah, the ocean. You ain't finding nothing in the ocean. No. We don't find hardly nothing. No. In the in the actual scale of it. You can't excavate the seafloor. And what percentage of the Earth's landmass has been has been searched for <laughs> artifacts? A very small percentage. Yeah, I and we say. found what we found, but that's in the percentage that's been searched. So so yeah, say say that same percentage and all this is buried underneath it. You'd have no idea. Well, back to my question. I asked the dang question. What do you? How do you think they built these pyramids? Get, give me your opinion on it. What do you think, Corn? I don't know. And until I see something different, I myself think it was just massive amounts of humans. But here's where I have the problem with that. How many people would it take to move that stone in and of itself? Right, the, the time frame. And how long could those said people keep that up in a day? Well, you're, you're the man to ask, Corn, because you've moved heavy stones and stuff with equipment for a lot. And I see that equipment tear up on a regular basis. Uh, the last loader I, I run could pick up 12 tons with one bucket, and that piece of machinery itself weighed 102,000 pounds. And... It wouldn't sustain that every day for very long, you know. I don't know. And until I see something different, that's not really the only way I can look at it is it was just a massive amount of slaves mm -hmm. and a really long time. I mean, how many people does it take to pick up? It said some of those weighed 80 tons. What's that, 160,000 pounds? Well, and how you hold it. Well, I mean, they, they would have had to have been... <laughs> Yeah, they would have had to have been using some sort of mechanical device. mechanical advantage to to create leverage and then to roll it across something, something uh, like yeah. a certain it, something in a cylinder. He, even in the way the pyramids look now, they wouldn't have looked at, looked that way during construction. I mean, that's the final result. So there's no telling the ramps that were going up and how many twists and turns it was to get to the top. I mean, they wouldn't have looked that way during construction. Yeah. So I mean, there's there's no telling. I, I take the four of us. If we was to lay some logs out from here to wherever to the CrossFit gym, how long do you think it would take the four of us to push two a two and a half ton block on those logs to the CrossFit gym, which is roughly what two miles, maybe, mm -hmm. in a straight line? What do you think? I don't know. I've never tried to push a two and a half ton stone across logs. I mean, four of us might get on it and push it and it just not move at all. That's what I'm thinking. But then you're talking millions of people. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, you could do a lot with millions. That's what you slaves. had. That's what they had. Did they really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Over time, yeah. I mean, and I, th I think those jokes were probably just very ex expendable. 
they worked them until they just could not move no more. Yeah. And then you, they did whatever you lay there until you can get up and then keep on. Yeah. Rolling. Yeah. You, 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 you definitely can't make the case that it couldn't be done with enough people. Like no. it, it, it could be, it, I believe it could have been done if you had enough people. I mean, you're talking about millions of people. Now you're talking about, okay, well, you can do some wild stuff if you got millions of slaves. Yeah, there's never, I, I mean, what, what could we compare it to that has been tried? What, what have we ever seen in, that's been tried with a workforce of millions of people doing the same thing that, that are completely controlled? I mean, we've never seen that. No, but uh, one thing you look at, I mean, it's not on that level, but like old school logging. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. You know, they would use animals. Um, animals too, plus all the people. And, and they're moving they logs have, that probably weighed tons. They've got yeah. those chutes that they would use to, you know, down a hill to, you know, feed the the big logs down. And so, you know, you think of like an old school logging operation. And I, I mean, whatever animals they had, I'm sure they were able to had some way of training you, them. You know, when they were building the Hoover Dam, though those people weren't slaves, they worked those people like slaves. It you worked until they said you stopped, mm -hmm. and if you couldn't handle it. You was gone, and they replaced you with someone else. People needed jobs so bad that th they didn't care. You did exactly what they said when they said. And then, you know, later on is when all the labor laws started getting enforced and stuff. It was because of stuff like that. Yeah. When they were building the Hoover Dam, they worked people like dogs, man. Yeah. Fell into the wet concrete below. Oh, son. yeah. <laughs> That's right. What do you, so you never gave your answer, Chill. Corn said he thinks that it was – done by human power that's always where i've been until he sees something some other evidence that's always where i've been i think but i think it still needs an explanation of how they did it and i don't have much for that other than i i think you're talking a ton of people a ton of animals and technologies and equipment that we don't know what they had mm -hmm. they had it and we've lost it we've so a little combination then. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Blake? I think they had some high technology we don't know about. Yeah. Do you think that was, do you think technology given to us by some evil spirit? Well, that's thought. But I mean, people make the case about that, from. about the technology we have now and the iPhone. And the, the artificial intelligence, in, intelligence. Well, you look at like how, that's not human created. How long humans have been around, and it just in the recent, you know, last what fifty years, we've just had just tremendous mm -hmm. increase in technology. They call it, and I mean, even that, as you know, as old or recent as the TV or even mm -hmm. the light bulb and mm -hmm. those kind of things. And I mean, I think it's a little bit crazy to think that they couldn't have got to <clears throat> maybe not those exact inventions, but from the period till things were reset at the flood, um, that they couldn't have got technology. I'm not saying cell phones and things, but like more advanced technology than we're thinking, Oh, they had sticks and stones and that was all they had to work with. Mm-hmm. Well, Chili's saying that there are people who think that actually the recent the technology that we're using now and has been developed over the last fifty years it is not human. Is not human. Yeah, I don't know. Well, that so that statement, I can make sense of that statement in my head in light of the fact that I just told you if you gave me an infinite budget and two thousand years or whatever, I couldn't figure this out well yeah. but you're also not a right a computer so are you saying the people that because somebody i mean like somebody created the iphone now through what power are well, you saying that somebody where did they or gain a group the knowledge? of people yeah, yeah but where did they where did they gain the knowledge did they figure it out mm -hmm. or, or was it like or some sort of revelation did, or just, yeah did they receive it the 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 idea and the design of it from some non-human source yeah i mean the functionality of it all 
it really is. Of course, I'm just an idiot, but it's mind bending. Yeah, uh, like especially they, they, you just scroll your finger and like the world, the, uh, the 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 full scope and spectrum of human knowledge, so to speak, is at your fingertips. That it, doesn't it's compute. Mi- it's mind bending. Also, when you compare it in light of the few thousand years of known human history that we have and how little things changed over the course of many thousands of years which is how it would be right one thing feeds off of the other yeah it's moving like this barely up barely up barely up a little more up whoa okay i mean that's that i think that is expected yeah so i think like the progression of the the first computer was so humongous all the components it wasn't even a fit in this entire office building that yeah. we're in it wasn't a fit fit there How, however many years ago was that so what i think is okay so what was the main what was the main catalyst what turned for it? the speed yeah was it electricity the, yeah was it tesla the car mm-hmm. you know was it you know, whatever it may be running water to to, to the masses you know, what was it? Because something ramped it up right then. Hmm. Yeah. And, and whether, whether or not something came here or, or, and gave us that during it, I'm not saying that that isn't a possibility, but I think something definitely ramped technology up really fast and it's become a progression. Right. So however many years ago, that big humongous computer started, I don't think it's unfathomable to think that now we're possibly at this point from that day Mm -hmm. it's something else man so what did you you think it's electricity that started the and people being able was it the refrigerator (laughs) i mean yeah i would i mean just off the top of my head i would go back to electricity as being being that ushered in the new age yeah of what we have now but looking at tesla so much is is confusing about who actually invented what what is misattributed what did you know what did tesla really invent who who did he steal it from who's who invented things that's actually tesla technology that they stole from him you know who who gets the credit who doesn't get the credit but it's it's a possibility that tesla or, or whoever had way more at the time that got buried at the time I mean, I don't know that this, I don't think this is Tesla technology, but it's just an example. We had essentially, when I say we, the U.S. government, the U, the United States technological patents had, had, has blueprints and, and patents for, for technological devices that, that look a lot like the, the mobile devices that we have and, and, and VR goggles and VR glasses and, and other artificial intelligence pieces. We had those in the daggum sixties. Mm-hmm. You can go look them up. Yeah. I've heard that. I mean, it, you can look at, I mean, you can find them. That's bizarre. I mean, what, 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 what happened to that? How did they have that? D- does knowing that they have that then does that give more credence to the idea that we didn't freaking do it? <laughs> Cause it's like they had, it's like that was invented without the necessary predecessors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Because see, you can, it fu- wasn't a great, it wasn't a gradually evolving process. No, it's like we went from, you had the plans, but you didn't have the knowledge to actually build the plan yeah, out. Yeah. We didn't have a, we didn't have a TV yet, yeah. but we had VR goggles well, yeah. in, well, in blueprint form. Well, that's what? A good, that, that's a good point though. And Chad, you might, could, I'm sure you could articulate on this point. A lot of the things that we use now in public, the military had way before now. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, GPS is one. Yeah, GPS. Uh, nobody had night vision twenty years ago or twenty five years ago. How yeah. long did the military have it? Thermal in- imaging. I remember two thousand sixteen. We started putting that on the, the police cars. You know, on the spotlights where we would do. It had a function where you could not turn the light on and just point it in the direction and it would come through your computer, you know, not to alert whoever you're looking yeah, for. Yeah. Infrared. Yeah. Yeah. How long the military have that? Yeah. yeah. A lot of the technology, the military had way before now and had, 
probably secretly way before we even knew that. I, I, I wouldn't say way, at least to my knowledge, not way before. I would say decades before, right. but not like, not like 60, 70 years before. I got you. Yeah. Um, the, the, I guess I, I've always thought this verse was very interesting in context of the conversation that we're having, um, in Daniel chapter 12, verse four. And this is the end of, uh, I think this is an angel of God giving Daniel this revelation of, uh, of events in the last days. And he finishes up with, uh, he finishes up the revelation with saying, but you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. I, I just, it's like, that is very clear to me. That is a very clear sign. Um, why would this be put in there? Like it, it's very articulate. It's very clear. And we can't ignore that for whatever reason, that steep, uh, curve in increase in technology. Like, this is just an interesting verse to me. I've always well, thought about it. In light of the earlier conversation that started off this podcast, how do you uh, make this is a podcast? Podcast. How do you make sense of the fact that what it says in Daniel is happening, but also, as we talked about, we're getting dumber. Yeah, yeah. But both are happening. Mm -hmm. Well, I I think the and on what level? Are I both think happening? the masses are getting dumber but overall what humanity is capable of and and possesses within their grasp and of knowledge is is increasing yeah rapidly yeah but it's made it, it is making the masses dumber like the masses are the wall martians <laughs> if you want to if you're confused about what i say about the masses Go to the Walmart in West Rome or go to the Walmart in Tryon, Georgia. It's horrific. I went into Walmart the other day to buy that phone for our call-in show, and I was astounded. <laughs> I was literally astounded at, the, at the, the, the figure of human that was represented in the Walmart. I don't go to Walmart. I just went there because... Cornbread told me about the Walmart phone. And I don't think he told me I didn't qualify for an Obama phone. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't. Not, you ain't bussing. <laughs> well, yeah. Have you been to Walmart lately? Have you been to Walmart lately, Blake? You have, haven't you? Oh, yeah. I love Walmart. I, I go too. there all the time. I do too. Yeah. It's where um, low I, prices. I, I think they buy it. deer corn, man. I think the outstanding citizens, upstanding citizens. Between the rollbacks, those, markdowns. It's bad, man. West Rome's got, I mean, that's kind of your upper class. You want to go to the good one, go to East Rome. No, I That's went, where all your thievery <laughs> happens and stuff. I went to the Walmart one time in Tryon, Georgia, and it, it was, it was wild, son. <laughs> I mean, it was wild. Just the, the, the riffraff? Yeah, I mean. I mean, I, I would like to know who would win in a fight between the Walmart in Tryon and the Walmart in Bremen, Georgia. Just get, uh, just, just, just pluck out whoever's in each of them right now and yeah. just have them wild and right. Make them take a song. Scantron test. Make yeah. them take an SAT. <laughs> Scantron. Uh, an SAT and an arm wrestling competition. Oh, man. Now, these people, they're probably strong. Oh, I'm sure they are. Yeah. Well, yeah. So do you think it's, it's specifically talking about the knowledge that was talking about in Daniel, it progressing in technology? Mm, good, good question. Do you think it's particularly speaking on like the progression of that's all the, the way, way I, to our demise? The, the way uh, I interpret it is, our, is that our, speaking Hey, of? I'm so smart because I got this Google. Yes, because well, maybe it's both. How do you, what is smart and what is intelligence? Because, yeah. you know, we, everybody in this room and everybody listening to this podcast knows more knowledge probably yeah. than Tesla knew. Mm. 
It's a long I, well, time yeah. ago. I yeah. mean, I, like maybe not, but my example is uh, go as far back as you want. Whoever was the smartest at the time. You can definitely say they have more access to, more, to knowledge. Yeah. And, and well, Tesla didn't know how to, he didn't know nothing. He didn't know. He didn't know how to, how to play doodle jump. On his iPhone, he would be playing that doodle jump. <laughs> he didn't, playing doodle jump, eating fried eggs. <laughs> he didn't, he with didn't, cheese. He didn't know how to play uh, uh, Candy Crush. Yeah. Like that's a stupid example, but he didn't know so much because it wasn't available to be known. That's right. But he had the intellectual capacity and the whatever you, the the re- required intelligence. He's way smarter than we were, than we are, but he didn't, he may not have known as much yeah, stuff. I see what you're so how do you measure it? Mm-hmm. No, that's a good question. He Maybe didn't know how to both. drive. He didn't know how to drive a car. He's a slack jawed idiot. I mean, he, but it wasn't available to be known. It wasn't, it didn't exist. So yeah. because the technology is progressing, what we know collectively is going to increase, right. but we don't have to be getting smarter for that to be true. Yeah. So, like on on a line, like everyone can pretty much know the same thing now. Everyone in our circle with with Google, okay. Mm-hmm. But now you have that line of experience and how to apply the things you went through in life and and the skill sets that you have. That's the only do. Talking particularly about knowledge, like everyone, if that's what it means, like I'm I'm I don't know. I'm asking y'all's opinion. Like we're all on the same level. When it comes to Google, the same exact level, and new things are being put on Google right now. Mm-hmm. Well, access to knowledge and the ability to interpret it and do something with it is different. Yeah, like you can have well, and understanding and, it, and it's what it's yeah. saying in the word it, knowledge, particularly. It just says, "Many shall run to and fro," which a lot of people have interpreted also use that as an in, a sign of the um, end times. Many shall run to and fro as a sign of our ability to travel and traverse the earth very quickly and and how air travels made that possible. And then it says, and knowledge shall increase. So. Well, knowledge has increased. Yeah, man. yeah. And, 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 and knowledge, and, and it can go hand in hand with my, idea of the human becoming less intellectual because as chili just said knowledge doesn't necessarily mean intellect right so you know i just i can't get i i don't know about you guys but i can't get over the fact that the logo for this apple phone is an apple with a bite taken out of it i can't get over that yeah because of the symbolism with genesis yeah I can't, I literally can't ignore that. Am I being, am I being ridiculous? Who knows, man? Look, there it is. I see it. I don't know. I mean, how, how do you know that that was intentional or not? (laughs) Well, if your company's name, even if it's Apple, which to begin with, what does Apple have to do with technology, like a phone, a computer? Well, why is anything named what and it's then, named? Why is Google and named And then Google? why would you put it on there with a cut out of it? Like why a would bite you, out of it. Why would you, if, if well, I'm going to name my company Banana, would I, why would I just. You might would peel it and have a bite out of it. Why? Well, come on Because you're partaking in the product so yeah i mean like why because i'm not saying that i'm right i'm just i'm just saying that looking logo well that's the thing an apple i want to bite it (laughs) (laughs) i don't don't like apples i mean that's the thing though why why is it it worked (laughs) there's some genius behind it well did it work because of the logo or did it work because this is part of satan's plan to freaking take over and destroy the human race. Well, why would it, why would that have worked? Because it was an actual good look. I mean, let me ask you this. I would love for you to, do you think anything's happened by coincidence? Like, do you think that things just happen and they, they just happen just like, Oh, well that just happened to be that way. (laughs) 
I, I, I can't. I believe I, I, I don't know, Blake. That's a good question. I have to believe that all the goings on are being orchestrated. Obviously, my perspective is coming from a a faith based perspective, where like all things are being orchestrated by spiritual hosts of wickedness, and um, and the Bible even references Satan and his kingdom, and. But Satan as the prince of the power of the air, the prince of this world right now in this current time. But what about the things that we say are orchestrated by God? When we say, oh, this was a good thing. This didn't happen by accident. This was a good thing. God put this person in my life. God allowed this to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because we enjoy enjoyable things. So we like to say that when something good happens, it's of God. And when oh, something yeah. bad I'm happens. Gonna, I'm going to talk about that in just a little bit. Oh, that's a good point. Well, Mike. that's exactly what I'm getting at. Is that what we think? Because I'm saying you can't really have it both ways to where you have a good day and you go, well, thank God bless me on this day. He caused this to happen. I have found a $20 bill on the street. And then the next day, Someone takes the $20 Someone bill. Someone steals your $20 bill and you go, oh, that was the work of Satan. That wasn't by accident. I mean, to to a degree, things are just happening. But, but do but, you think that there is a, like, do you think that things are purposeful, everything that happens? Or do you think that just like, oh, well, they, yeah, that just happened to be the logo. Like, there's no, it's just I struggle with how it's, how it's not one or the other. Yeah. I struggle with how, well, genu generally things are just kind of happening and there's no rhyme or reason. But then every now and then, either God or Satan will step in and just influence this. Well, the two could coexist. I mean, they could. Yeah. Like, is it? But then when do you determine which is what? I mean, like, it, then it's just is, a is guessing it a coincidence game. that I'm going to get up here in an hour and go take a pee. Like, that's just the normal functions of life, right? Yep. Well, but that's but the how... things that are moving the, 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 the pieces in the direction. Like, I the, love this conversation. Because... But it's not a coincidence that you're going to have to get up and pee because God designed your body to need water and to to get rid of the waste and the excess. And so that's, it's not coincidence. It's I, you I drank heard, water. So you have to pee. I that's, heard someone say, if you drank the perfect amount of water, you would never pee. Cause yeah, he's, and effect. A, he's an idiot. <laughs> he's an idiot. So, <laughs> and if you ate the perfect amount of food that had no waste, you'd never crap. If you dehydrate, oh, we you know, still we pee. Had, we, and you we, got, we had dark. a buddy that does that. Scott Worthington. Yeah. He craps like every once a week. Well, he goes over the threshold of, Every now and then, then. Yeah, we have a dad that does that, too. <laughs> well, he just stopped up. <laughs> <laughs> He's just, he got <laughs> milk of magnesia. Keep him going. <laughs> but, uh, no, that's a good question. It's a pertinent question. What is, and who decides, man? Speaking of peeing, I got to go pee. Y'all continue. I do, too, man. Well, y'all go pee. Me and Corn better talk about there's this. There's two bathrooms. Yeah, there's two bathrooms. Y'all go pee. Screw you guys, YouTube. You idiots. I'm going to put the camera on Corn. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, tell me. Tell me, Corn. Yeah, I don't believe in coincidences at all. Um, could it be something? Absolutely. Could it be that, who was it, Steve Jobs? Yeah. Like that logo? Yeah. Wanted to name his company Apple. I haven't watched or read anything on him, and he, that's what he come up with. Absolutely. Well, walk out for me when, when you say you don't believe in coincidences. I mean, I don't even know what that means or doesn't mean because I could say I don't believe in coincidences either, but then I, but does that then mean that I think everything is orchestrated by some higher power? Well, no. I mean, I don't, I think nothing happens by mistake. Do you think everything is caused to happen? Yeah. So, so how do, how does free will work into that if everything is caused to happen? Ooh, busted mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Busted. <laughs> <laughs> Well, some things can be caused I, I by your decisions. Know. I don't know. I don't know either. Well, thank I mean, you. I mean, yeah. really, I don't. I, I, I because do I tend know. to agree you, with you, you but you, then you. I lean heavily on the side of we ain't got no daggum free will. <laughs> Everything we do is caused by our how we were born, our genetic code, and or how we were raised, the environment that we were brought up in. Neither one of those things did we have jack crap to do with. Right. I didn't choose that I was born that you think the way you think thinking. No. Nah. Yeah. And, 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 yeah, and when you look at it that way, you're not even, you, you're not even choosing the, the decision-making process that you use. No, no. And I was raised in an environment that steered me this way. Well, I didn't have no effect on that. I couldn't have done nothing about it. 
So, so then if that is, if those are the things that cause our decisions to be what they are, well, then I don't have control over it. Yeah. And then that would, that would lead one to believe that if Apple was indeed a company of the enemy, yep. we should become convicted not to deal with it. Yep. Right. Yep. Well, well, it, it, that, it, that in the conversation me and Chili just had that, that being said, like, here's the caveat. The Lord will take bad things and turn them to good for those who love him. So if we could say, well, Apple is a, is a wicked organization and it's the foundations of it started that way. And that's what's implied by that logo is that it's meant to be this thing that distracts humanity from their creator, which it very well does. And so we should, we look at that. If we, if we make that conclusion, then we say, well, we shouldn't use those products. I believe that's incorrect because I also believe that for those who love him, God will take inherently evil and wicked things or circumstances and turn them to good. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and also all things are, um, like, just because, you know, for example, eating of certain meats was bad in the Old Testament. And, you know, you see where Jesus talks about like, well, it's fine for, you know, by you saying that I can't eat that meat, it actually is giving it more power than it's due. Like mm -hmm. you can eat meat. It's so long as it doesn't cause someone else to stumble, you know, in that particular case. But in this case, to say that I can't use that because it was created by Satan for an evil purpose, but it can also be used for good. You kind of giving it more power than really it had yeah, in the, the first same, place. It's the same as. Well, how are we going to talk about the pyramids and or imagery and logos without talking about the one dollar bill and the pyramid on the back of it with the all C and I? That's the daggum foundation of our currency. Let me see if I have a dollar. Let's see if you got a dollar. Well, while you're looking for that, let me tell you. We try to say whether we like is, um, you know, are there coincidences or yeah. not? And we try to determine this based off of our mind. Yep. Okay. And that's the problem. We can't say, do you think there's coincidence or do you think there's not? In, in the Bible, I, I could find verses. I can't spit them off right now, but I could find verses to back up that things happen for a reason. They're <laughs> orchestrated. One verse is God says, behold, I make all things known yeah. um, from the, end i start at the end with what yep. i want and i go back to the beginning yep. and make it and so we say that some things are coincidence because they're happening subconsciously to us so we have conscious and, and subconscious and so we say well i didn't consciously realize that that was what happened so therefore it must have just been a coincidence but things affect us subconsciously but for instance how we're raised like you know, yeah, like, but, and that's something that we don't pay attention to. And the decisions you make, the way you act, you could say are a product of how you were raised and all that led up to culminate to this day right here. But but that's what I, I you know, I go with that. And then I don't you think get there's to the free will. That's how but then got. that's how I get to that. Yeah. Because I'm great saying there. I, I, I think that's it's biblical. I think it makes sense that we don't have. But then there's consequences to that being true. And I know you can say, well, we can't wrap our head around how that could be true and we have free will. And I get that too. But I'm saying it all to me adds up to, okay, well, yeah, that kind of telling me we don't in the way we think of it. Like, well, does we can free just... will mean that you have free will in all things, in all aspects? Or does it mean you have free will to choose God or not? Well, how would we have free will in, in just that area if we had it in no other? Uh... Like, like, how would we, you know, I mean, once again, I can totally follow. Well, you just, you can't understand that. You're not smart enough. What, correct. But I'm just saying, since yeah. I can ask the question, well, how, how is it that free will, if you said, well, no, the free will that the Bible talks about is just talking about your ability to choose God or not. It's like, well, that seems odd to me that I don't have free will when it's mm -hmm. comes down to whether I can, I choose to go bowling tonight or not, but I do the most important decision, the most important thing to actually consider and think about. Yeah. Just go read a book by RC called willing to believe, but that won't help you. RC Spurl. <laughs> yeah, no, it, they, there are no answers, but at least, uh, okay. You telling me that I need to read. Yeah. <laughs> RC.
Cap. Uh, that's cap. cap. Chili, before you play us, before you play us a daggone roll on what's this pyramid on the back of this dollar, because I'm looking at it right now, and I'll yep. tell you what, man, it's, it ain't good. <laughs> It ain't that good. Man. I, I got to tell y'all about this new stuff, man. Look at this logo. That's pretty sweet. On this freaking ultralight. It looks good on that one. Uh, yeah. Tank top right here. I mean, it is clean, son. That is. It is clean. So Barbell has come out with a new lineup. I freaking love these tank tops. I was wearing one this morning at the gym, a white one. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the Be Hard logo, and then we have the new Adapt Shorts unbelievable improvements to these to i mean this short this is a brand new design but basically barbell took a lot of the feedback that i gave them from running the cocodona 250 and they built the features that we learned out there while running 250 miles and they built them into this short right here it's an awesome short i wore these um yesterday during my workout um and they've got them out now, or tomorrow they're coming out, right, Blake? Yep, tomorrow. With, uh, with the B-Hard logo on them right there. These things are excellent, man. I like them because they're, they are, dirt, they're, they, like, they got some weight to them. It ain't like a little pair of silkies, right? You can actually put something in your daggone pocket without these things falling off you. You know, they're the they're a great length. Uh, unless you're cornbread. Cornbread has cornbread shaves his legs and he can't stand I'm Nordic, wearing man. He can't stand wearing short <laughs> shorts because it may have to shave his legs more often. <laughs> but uh these will be Every out night. tomorrow, man. These adapt shorts. I mean, they are unbelievable. Every Thursday the eighteenth. Thank you guys for making yeah, thank you guys for making these things with the logo on them and it just looks sharp man the way they printed that on there i'm freaking really happy with this stuff yeah they look good so blake will you attach a link it's barbellapparel.com yeah i'll put it in the but blake will put a link uh we've been barbell's been a partner with us here at 307 project going on what probably two and a half years now right blake two been, years been something while, like that yeah. uh these guys are awesome man and they make great clothes, anything from jeans, collared shirts, fitness apparel, whatever you need, you can get it from them. And uh, they're great people with a great product. And that, to, to me, that's what makes the difference is the people behind the product. They take feedback, they make improvements, and they're constantly making their gear better so that we can go further, longer, and uh, be more comfortable while we're doing it. So, check them out, man. Barbellapparel.com. Thank you guys so much for freaking doing these, this custom lineup. That is sweet. All cap, right. Cap lock that drip. Cap lock it. That's a drip. That is drip. Your drip is cap lock, Chad. <laughs> cap lock. Screw well, that. <laughs> look, man. The dollar bill and all the money. Freemason imagery is is all over it and i don't understand it all but look look at the back and the front and the spider webs around the edge and the the flowered up ornate looking imagery and that flows out of the seals you know there's three latin phrases on the dollar bill e pluribus unum which is out of many one mm. and then that's on the right side with the eagle holding the arrows and the uh Olive branch. I guess that's what that is. <clears throat> then the second, the, the great seal on the left side, uh, however you say that, you know, I took Latin. I'm a Latin speaker. Novus Ordos. Yeah. <laughs> Novus Ordos Seclorum. That is um, a new order of the ages. Well, I'll be dang. That's what that means. And what's funny is when we reference the new world order and all this crap, I mean, the all seeing eye Washington would talk about, uh, you know, a new order of the ages. I wonder what those letters and, and Roman numerals on the bottom of the pyramid mean. M D C C L X X V I. Mike, know. Mike, Delta, Charlie, Charlie, Lima, X-ray, X-ray, Victor, India. You see him? Yep. 
and then uh and you and and annuit coeptus coptus yep that is um those roman numerals that is he approves our undertakings wow he has approved our undertakings who is he i don't know those roman numerals are 1776 i figured oh really okay yeah. so that at least makes a little sense learning something new today then yeah he has approved our undertakings it's something like that I'll tell you what boys and girls this ain't good the all c and i right there yeah, I, I, I got mean, to, I got to get rid of these. This cash it's around the all C and I. He has approved our undertakings, because you know that's that's. I think that would be called the eye of God. They call it. Oh, George, and Novus Ordo Seclorum. That's um, I believe, a new order of the ages. It's coming, so, yeah. boys and girls. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, and we carry that around. Huh. And um. Yep. And then there's In God We Trust right above the big one. What do you think about that, CB? I see you over studying up on something. I don't know. Is that the C behind the pyramid? Is it like in front of a bunch of water? Probably. Probably on uh, Sapelo Island, actually. I ain't digging. I ain't digging that eyeball constantly checking me out. Eye of God, you don't like I ain't it. Seeing you, buddy. It always sees you. Mm. You know what's well, funny, Chili? You've always said all of the all of the evil and e, all of the evil agendas are in plain sight. You've always said that. Yeah. You know, you've told people like the whole what was it agenda twenty whatever. Mm -hmm. you, you've told people about all those. It's like. They don't try to, the freaking evil people don't try to hide their plans. It, that's and that's really weird too, man. I don't, I don't have anything in the Bible to say like to back this up, but I think there's something to that. That is how it operates, evil or how it has to operate. Maybe it doesn't have to, but it does, or maybe it does because it has to. Uh. It's 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 like it can't be deceptive because if it's like true deception of where it's it's it swindles you like like it happens without you realizing it. It's like you have to realize it and accept it or, or else it's like there's some sort of protection over us to where we can't have the the not something evil done, but, but th whatever this agenda is without it being revealed to you, explained to you in plain sight, whether you fully understand it or not, and then execute it. It can't just be, it can't be hidden. <clears throat> no, it, well, it, it the, can't be. It, yeah. It can't be hidden. Well, you know, you say there's, there's nothing in scripture that would imply that, but we can look at text that tells us, all things will be brought into the light. Yeah. Like, that's interesting. Yeah. Well, and yeah, I think, I think some of this stuff, it is deceptive because we don't realize it or see it, but we don't pay attention. That's, that's the thing. Yeah. I mean, we don't pay attention. It, it's not, it's completely not hidden at all. Mm -hmm. It's not, I guess it just seems hidden because politicians don't get up and talk about exactly well nobody's hey he's coming out telling you nobody's telling you hey Have you seen the one dollar bill yeah we're telling you what we want to do on the one dollar bill you dummies you carried around all day yeah nobody's saying that so then it's like it's hidden because you can't look for yourself and observe i mean i don't know how many people look at the one dollar bill because i did as a child and was like what is that but it doesn't seem like that's a common thing. Or if you do, you just kind of get over it. That's just the way it is. Well, I want to know why it looks the way it does. Why is there three daggum Latin phrases on it that say he has approved our undertakings, a new order of the ages. And what is it? E pluribus unum. Um, from many, from one. many one. <laughs> what the crap? Yeah. I mean, that, that means something. And that really meant something to the dudes who put it on there. Like, if it don't mean nothing to you, it meant something to 
all the men that put that on there. Like big time. And what did it mean to them? Well, I would say I would say the from many one would be the the easiest to explain in terms of the formation of the United States from many states, yep. one nation. Sure. But um but a new like a new whatever the other one, a new order of the world or whatever, like yeah. We're talking about like something on a global scale there. I don't know, man. Do you think that do you think that the United do you think the United when we when we look at the at least what we can conclude about the last days from scripture, do you think that the United States will play a role or do you think that the United States of America is going to continue to digress digress into a place where they're no longer consequential on the war on the world stage? Or we are no longer consequential on the world stage everybody is firmly convinced that it's one or the other i don't understand why you, you why it has to be one or the other it could totally be both i think it's all just going to become one big conglomerate i mean there's zero there's zero reason to think that the united states like if you if you sat down and said there's no way the United States plays a role in this the end of the world ain't even close it's going to be in ten thousand years why would you say that but also if you said you think it's impossible that the end of the world is not within the next five years ain't no way we making it out of this century that's that's really dumb I that, agree. that's really dumb to say yeah. that that's impossible. It's really dumb because you're, everyone wants to point to, well, look at this, explain this. How could we be this close and all this lining up? And this has never been like this before. And we've had a global stage. If you think it's impossible that the whole daggum world is essentially wiped. I mean, not like it has been, but you, you, you get the point. And then we just start over essentially. That could totally happen. Very easily happen. Could totally happen. It, and there's many different ways that that could come about. Exactly. So, so do I think it'll play a role? I think it could, but I think it. I think you could be looking at 2,000 years from now and and look at America like Mesopotamia. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with that. I've thought about that too. So there I could just be another reset. So I have no idea. Um, but I think. I do think that whenever the end is, whether America's even a thing or not, yes, it's all going to one. Mm -hmm. The Bible literally illustrates that that's what will happen. And also, if you pay attention to the world and foreign affairs, <laughs> you don't have to read the Bible to think that would happen. Yeah. It's happening. That's true. So, yeah, it's, it's happening. Whether it will happen with America involved or not, that's just a matter of what happens on a global scale but if america is still around then yes america will play a huge role in joining the world together and and as a matter of fact look i'm not trying to dog trump or trying to make out donald trump to be a bad like especially what i'm about to say was done under his administration a bad thing but freaking jared kushner the Trump administration was everyone wants to attribute whoever the president is. Everyone wants to attribute everything to them. Yeah. So which is ridiculous. So Joe Biden has caused everything that's happened yeah. and anything good that was happened. Well, that's Joe. Well, dude, no, <laughs> he can't cause anything. No, Joe, he's a vegetable man. And Trump might as well be. That's what you idiots don't understand is even though he's not a vegetable, he might as well be. He, he literally, Donald Trump in office, did as much as a carrot would have done that was the, considered the president. He sat there and golfed and spoke when he had to. And boy, but you liked when he spoke. Yeah, I get it, but he didn't do anything. It, it's things being done under him. And what you don't understand why you say, well, my life was a lot better when Trump was in. Yeah, because it's freaking designed that way. Okay? It's designed for your life to be different under different administrations and the pendulum to continue to swing. But what happens ultimately happens. See, what happened under the Trump administration with Jared Kushner was the Abraham Accords. There was peace in the Middle East, right? For the, it seemed like the first time in forever. The amount of peace deals that were struck, Jared Kushner deserves, a, everyone says Trump, but he didn't even do it. It was Kushner and, and his team. Everyone, they deserve a Nobel Peace Prize because my Lord, look at what they, look at what they did and Trump negotiating tactics and 
They brought the world together. They were brought together as much as they're brought together now. Conflict stopped for a reason. I believe if you want my prediction, I could be totally freaking wrong. That's why I don't even like making predictions. But I would I would wager that Trump becomes the president again in this election cycle. Not because he's duly elected or was ever duly elected or because Biden was duly elected. None of that. But because that's who it will be. Mm -hmm. And that's the cycle that that is being put forth. And then what will happen is peace will again, quote unquote, return to the Middle East where it's at. There's conflict in Israel. Now Trump comes into office. Boom, that stops. Not because he's actually doing and not because like, Oh, I ran scared to attack Israel. If Trump's in there, that, 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 when Biden's in there, they feel strong and powerful. No, <laughs> that's, that's not why. And I'm not saying that the U S directly tells Iran, okay, don't attack now, but attack now. But essentially that is what happens. Well, I talked about that on my last, on my truck talk. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, that, that is essentially what happens. So a lot of people are, will agree with you on that too, by the way, at least in the, in the comments section. Well, yeah, well, they don't have to agree or not. I mean, that's just, yeah, that's just, reality. well, it's just good that people are, are, are seeing things through that lens. Finally, it, the exact same thing happened minus us being involved and Israel being involved the first time it was either the end of 2019 or the beginning of 2020 yep. when we struck somewhere or another and killed one of their generals, Iranian generals yep. of the revolutionary guard. What was it? Suleimani or yeah. And they yeah. said, we're going to retaliate. So we get to sit on and watch them shoot rockets at a, one of our bases in Iraq. They show the rockets going up. They're mm. coming to one of our bases. Guess what? None of our people were there. How about that? Because they talked to each other and said, look, dude, we got to save face. We got to continue to oppress our people or whatever it is they do. We got, to, can, can we save a little face? And whoever said, hey, we about to haul out right here, shoot some rockets over there. It's going to be fine. Yeah. And if you think for a sweet second that the same thing just didn't happen. And we got to sit on a nice, beautiful Georgia Saturday and listen to the world announce Iran is attacking Israel and get the play by play three hours later. Yeah. Come on, dude. Yeah, come on, man. Yeah. But, but, but there's, there's something that doesn't allow people to see that. I don't know. There's something <laughs> that, that 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 hinders that from being what is plainly seen. I don't know what's blocking it, but something is. It's the fear of man. I, I, well, yeah, human emotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that works for me. I, I mean, yeah, because that is plainly what's happening. That's the level that it's orchestrated. It ain't orchestrated on a minor scale. Ain't ain't nothing a surprise. On what happens. Yeah, I talked about it in truck talk. Same thing. I mean, nothing. And if you want to go back to what, there's always fighting with Israel in the Middle East, but if you want to go back to what kicked off all this anyway, and you think, like I said the other night, that the Iron Dome was compromised by accident, you're wrong, man. <laughs> you're wrong. You have to explain how that happened before I have to tell you why it didn't, because the burden of proof would lie with you making the claim that that happened as it said it was. And, and it just, you know, the, the, the peace and the not and the unrest in the middle East will continue to w waver and vary. And, um, yeah, the, the, I think it all comes to a head in, in November and the aftermath of that election will will not because it will actually, but will then play a role in in the re resolution of that of the current, if you will, conflict. So, no, that's what I think about that. But yeah, what what Cornbread just said, if you would pay attention to every time there's any announcement, you you could you could find. Well, well, that that's what was hilarious to me on Saturday when everybody on uh, not everybody obviously but the majority of people on all the all of the 
social media platforms were commenting and posting that World War Three yeah. was about to kick off. And it's like that well that then that that's proving what that's proving what you're saying. People can't see what's happening. Like people people are still functioning with this idea that you have independent nations or independent world powers who are acting independently yep. because they actually hate another nation. Yep. Like that's not happening anymore. That's not no. happening anymore. No, but, but that, that would have to be happening for any of this to make sense in the framework that most people look at. Exactly. It. And so they just, so you continue to look at it that way, mm -hmm. but then nothing, but why do you think nothing makes, isn't it funny <sighs> though? If you talk to the people who think World War Three is starting because of that, and, and they look at the Iran, they think, "Oh, that that caught Israel by surprise." They think they're confused. They don't get it. They literally will tell you, "Why would Iran do that? We'll bomb the crap out of them." I don't get why they do. They're stupid, man. Hey, you idiot! It would all make sense if you looked at it in the proper framework. You're trying to squeeze it into this box in your mind mm -hmm. of where it operates how you think it should operate or does or how always has. It don't. Mm -hmm. If you look at it in the proper framework, it ain't confusing at all why Iran did that. It ain't confusing at all. Money's about to change hands, boy. It ain't confusing. Yep. Well... <laughs> Believe that, boy. Drip on cap lock, son. Corn keeps his drip on cap lock. All right. Corn came up with a new slang term. I'll tell you what. I don't know what I'm going to be able to uh, title this episode. We, we've covered so many topics here. Language, increase in technology. Uh, are, things, are there such things as coincidence, symbolism on the dollar, conflict in the Middle East? Like, good night. This is uh, like a Tupac song, son. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be a paragraph long title that's, right here, man. Some old school Tupac right there. Machiavelli. <laughs> that's right. How, how, that long have we, how, how long have we been going here? Hour and a half. Uh -huh. Hour and a half. I, I, had a whole, I had a whole list of stuff that I wanted to go over with you guys today. But, um, well, dang, man. I think I'll, I think I'll, no, I, I enjoyed this conversation. This was good conversation. Um, but you know, as, as I go through my, uh, well, as I'm going, moving through a season of difficulty, obviously the Lord is continuing to, uh, conform me more into the likeness of his, his image and reveal new things to me about suffering and what the purpose of suffering is and, and all that. And I've, I've been thinking a lot about it. And um, I'll just go over a few points here with you guys. If you might also uh, be going through a season of, of difficulty, and even if you're not, just go ahead and uh, expect that it's coming. All right. And that's my first point. Uh, when I talk to people who are going through something hard, they want to get it over with so that things can be good again. They want to move through the season of difficulty or overcome the problem that they are experiencing so that then things can be good again. And what they don't realize is they, there will always be something else. So if you're moving through a season of difficulty and you're trying to rush it and you want to get through it so that life can be perfect again, because you think when you get through this, when you get this squared away, whatever it is you're dealing with, when you overcome this obstacle, when this suffering is over, things can be perfect. You're telling yourself a lie. And it's, it's, it's going to hinder you from moving through the difficult season that you're moving through right now in this moment. You need to understand that when you get done with this difficult thing, there is another difficult thing coming. It never freaking ends. You might have a little break in between if you're lucky, <laughs> but something else is coming. Get over it, man. And our perspective on these difficult things has to change. I've been, uh, 
I'll tell you, I had a really strange thing happen to me yesterday. It's the first time I've ever experienced this before. So I was at the gym yesterday, and there's a young man that comes to our gym who had a very traumatic brain injury. And um, he, could, he, he lost the ability to walk, uh, maybe even, I don't know if he lost the ability to speak, but he can't, he can't walk. He can now, but he completely couldn't after his TBI. Well, Hamza's working with him. So I've been watching Hamza work with him for the last couple of months. And just like very basic things are really hard for this young man. He's like 17 years old. And um, so it's always inspired me to see him in there, you know, working through the things that he's working through. But in the past, when I have seen this young man in there, in the midst of his season of difficulty, at least the one he's in right now, and, and, and by the way, a season of difficulty that I can't even comprehend. At 17 years old, like I, I, out of all the hard stuff I've been through, like it pales in comparison to what this young man is going through. Like it's not even in the same freaking zip code, man. It's, it's always so funny that people, when I see this stuff, I'm like, I can't, wh- I can't even believe that people look up to me and things that I've done that are supposedly hard. Yeah, they were hard. Yeah, they were hard for me. Now, we shouldn't compare like that, but it's just a perspective thing, right? So uh, in the past, I've, as I've seen this young man working through his season of difficulty in this challenge, you know, there's a part of me that when I would see him, I kind of feel bad for him. I got, I feel, I don't know if you would say sorry is the right word, but I feel bad for him. And it's not that I'm grieving for him. It's that I feel bad for him. You understand what I'm saying? Like, man, that really sucks, man. I feel real sorry for that young man. Yesterday, when I saw this young man out on the sidewalk with his father in the fight, son, just learn, just like, just like learn, relearning how to walk down the sidewalk, like in the fight, son. Like I looked at him and I felt joy for him. Really weird. Never experienced it before, but I saw him in this struggle and I was joyful for him. Now, there was still a part of me that grieved the fact that he was suffering. But this other part, and they, and they existed together, grief for his suffering, but not a grief that produces this feeling sorry for him, but grieving for his suffering, but then also feeling joy for the fact that he is going through this struggle and the joy is produced by the knowledge of what I know that is going to produce in his life because he's not given up. And I hope he has the spirit of Christ in him. I hope, I hope he knows Christ. I need to ask him one day, but look to look at him and say, that's freaking awesome, man. Like that's going to produce a ver- a version of a human that's going to produce something in him that could not be produced in any other way and i felt joy for him because of that and i was like whoa that caught me off guard man it caught me off guard but it made me think about how the Lord Jesus looks upon us in the midst of our times of difficulty. When we cry out to the Lord and we ask for our difficulty to end, we ask for our suffering to end, we get impatient, we're tired of it. I, I think a lot of times we think that more, we, we may envision in our mind that the Lord is looking on us with pity. Have you ever thought that the Lord Jesus might be looking upon you in your moments of greatest hardship during this life, and he might be smiling upon that situation? That he might be joyful to see you going through the suffering that you are going through because of his knowledge, his foreknowledge of what he knows it will produce in you. 
He knows it. You can't see it. When you're in the everyday grind of it, when you're in the midst of it, you don't have that perspective that Christ has where you can see the beginning from the end. It's hard to even think that anything is going to come good out of this pain and suffering that you're feeling. But have you ever wondered, or has it ever crossed your mind, that the Lord Jesus Christ might be looking upon you and, yes, maybe grieving the pain that you feel because that wasn't part of his design and he's not causing it, but you are going through it. And because you are his, he is smiling upon that circumstance that you are have that you that you are enduring because he knows what it's doing to you. And he can see it even though that you can't. And I felt like the Holy Spirit gave me that perspective yesterday as I was witnessing this young man. Really, really strange. It reminds me of a Bible verse that basically describes how we are being perfected through our suffering. Do you understand that? The, the child of God is being perfected through suffering. Now, all humans are going to suffer in this life. The difference between the human who suffers through this life without God and the human who suffers through this life with God, the difference is the one who suffers through this life with God is being led to perfection by way of suffering. The one who is suffering through this life without God is just simply suffering. There's nothing good being produced from it. It reminded me of a verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. God's word says, this is Paul writing this by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Do you understand this sums up how we as children of God are being perfected through suffering? And it's going to come and it's going to keep coming. But if you love the Lord, it is producing something great in you and in the kingdom and in the body of Christ. So it's just strange for me to look at now maybe seasons of struggle and find joy in them instead of them leading to depression or them leading to um, regret or them leading to anxiety or them leading to, you know, whatever negative emotion they would normally lead to, to be able to look upon them with joy and know that Christ Jesus is actually smiling upon my circumstance. Although he grieves for our pain, he also is thankful at the same time that we are his and we are experiencing these things in this life. It's a perspective shift. And the last thing that I have considered is this idea of peace. The, this idea of peace in the midst of suffering. You know, there's a verse in the Bible here that I want to share with you. It's in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, and it says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Jesus Christ. What is this peace, and why is it described as a peace that surpasses all understanding? I've been considering this because I've been considering the peace that is in my heart through Jesus Christ in the midst of suffering. 
And why is this piece described as a piece that surpasses all understanding? Because this piece that Scripture is talking about here is different than the piece as it is known and as it would be described by the world. When the world thinks about having peace, they think about the absence of struggle, the absence of worry, the absence of pain, the absence of toil, the absence of labor. When we think about peace, we think about maybe for you, it's laying out on a freaking beach somewhere with nothing to do and everything's good, the sun's shining, and you think, ah, it's quiet out here. I hear the sound of the water. This is peaceful. That's the world's definition of peace. That is not the peace that this is talking about. And that's why it's described as a peace that surpasses the understanding of man. Because this peace that Christ is offering to us is a peace that resides in us. And it it allows our spirit to rest in the midst of all the things and all the circumstances of the world that the world would say produces a time of unpeacefulness. We can be experiencing times of great conflict, but tap into a peace that surpasses all understanding and your spirit and your soul can rest in that. This is the peace that we want to connect with. All right? Stop seeking peace as defined by the world. Stop seeking peace in this idea of moving to the freaking wilderness somewhere and living in a little cabin by the river off the grid. That peace will not last. Something's coming. That peace will not endure. Seek the peace that surpasses all understanding that will endure any circumstance, any trial, any tribulation, any time. It will endure and it will be ever present in your heart by way of the Holy Spirit of Christ. That's the peace that we need to seek. And that is peace as defined by the Christian son and daughter of the Lord Jesus Christ. Get that through your head, man. And quit thinking you need to get through this time of suffering so that then you can have peace as defined by the world. Because you're just screwing yourself and you're hindering yourself from being perfected, from being conformed into the likeness and image of Christ. Does all that make sense to y'all? Yep. Absolutely. Blake? Yes, sir. Oh. <laughs> Holy crow. That was a good addition. <laughs> Can't add nothing to that, brother. For real. Well, well that's what I've been pondering. Awesome. All right. Well, we've got some super chats here. Okay. Hey, All I right. wanted to let you guys know too. If you if you enjoy conversation like <laughs> we just finished up with here and really delving into the, the meaning of God's word, like the real important stuff that will sustain you. You can join us on Patreon. We do three live meetings per month. Three Sundays is Sunday at 8 PM Eastern standard time. We have a live call where you can join in and it's Blake and I, we teach a message from Scripture, and then we open up the call for you guys to ask any questions or add to or whatever. It's live. And so it's really cool. We call it Resurrected. We've been doing it for like three years now. And if you're not able to make the live call, we post the recording on the Patreon platform. And you know what's nice about Patreon? If you're there, 
you actually get notifications and see the content that we post and we can actually speak freely and say the things that we want to say there. It's actually where we should freaking move the if that if Patreon ever got to the point that would be where that would be the ultimate place to move all of your content because you're not limited by these daggone algorithms and you're not limited by the 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 hindrance of speech and words that you can use or you can't use. So join us on Patreon, man. It's a really user-friendly app. You can download it to your phone and you can you have access to the page and cornbread's cornbread posts behind the scenes stuff on there. We do resurrected three Sundays a month. There's a whole community there of about, I don't know, five or six hundred people. And uh, you can comment on the posts. You can interact with us. You can interact with each other. So if you didn't know about that, I wanted to tell y'all about it. Yeah, and some people are asking, like, where's that? We can put a link in the show notes. but I will literally put a link in the show notes that you can click on it, and it will take you right there. Yeah, but if you type in Google Patreon 3 of 7 Project, it'll pull up. There's different tiers on there uh, where people can support the podcast, and so different things you know, come with different tiers. So just so you know that, just type it in, go in there and look at it if you want to join us on Resurrected. All right, we got some super chats here. We got Oh yeah. Chili Jr. Oh, coming in at 4.99. Dad, when are we going to start training for the Georgia Jewel? Jeez. You need to quit neglecting your offspring, Chili. Well, Chili Jr., I trained years ago for it and I ran it. So, if Well, he you... remembers that he's your son. Well, hey, he remembers when you won. He wants to do it again. Well, he never did it. He needs to do it for the first time. So when are you going to start training? You should have already been training, you freaking <laughs> derelict. <laughs> we got Kevin Holling, Hollinger coming in at four ninety nine. What do you think needs uh, we need to do in order to get out country, our country, back to at least one half of its former self? Uh, there's no hope for that, Kevin. Don't worry about it. Ain't happening. Jill Crumpton coming in at four ninety nine. Thank, Thank you, Jill. Jill. Jordan Vandermolen coming in at thirteen ninety nine Canadian. Thanks, Jordan. Thank. Said thank you guys for all the faith based and excellent content. As a young Christian father and husband, it's great to hear from people on the same page. It's getting rare. What You're part of all... Canada? I even say sorry. Uh, gatekeeper. He's a he's a Patreon member. Always on resurrected. PVVQ. Yep. Uh, action speak louder than words. Keep it real. Five dollars. Thank you, gatekeeper. Zach. Big, big Hamian. Coming in a dollar ninety nine. Dang, chili that pronator muscle looking dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what you think about that, huh? Told chili, you. Chili Junior just come back at a dollar ninety nine. Said he's telling mom you said that. Dang, <laughs> son. <laughs> chili Junior. He's ticked. <laughs> Mark Stoddard coming in at four ninety nine. Becky loves her dry bone shirt. Bless you all, three of seven project. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for your support, man. Jeff Nuco, five dollars. Military to civilian is about ten to fifteen window years uh, okay. ahead of technology. I think he's talking about. Yep, I would agree with that. Rab, nineteen sixty seven, coming in at five pounds. Chad, do you see a time where Christians will need to fight the ever growing cult of Islam? Why are people so blind to this religion of hate? No, I think I I don't see it. I mean, I don't. Well, not that. Not that we haven't been at war against uh, certain sects of Islam over the course of a long period of time, but no, I think all re I think all religions that are exist that religious philosophies and stuff, I think they're all just going to get mashed into the same conglomerate. It's just all part of the global system. Chili Junior coming in at dollar ninety nine. <laughs> Does this pertain to Romans nine? Some of what we were talking about well, uh, earlier. We don't know Chili Jr., but we love you, man. <laughs> Sean Wright coming in at 10 pounds. If you don't eat, you don't poop. If you don't poop, you die. Mm -hmm. hey, good word there, Sean. No cap. Nonetheless. 
LV Hold coming it. in at four ninety nine. Oh, Silver LV. platter in quotations for the call. <laughs> there you go. That's real LV right there, ain't it? Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. Bo Diddley coming in Bo at ten dollars. Idea for a paranormal land cruiser experience T-shirt. Don't be a turd, but if you do, be a Bigfoot turd. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we see you. We're gonna see Bo Diddley soon. Yeah. Now, now that's a turd. Now look, folks, that's that's a turd. And you can tell because there's hair in it. <laughs> and that leads me to what I was wondering. Is this being carnivorous? <laughs> it's freaking Hobart Jackson in the in the full sun. Paul Grogan coming in at five dollars. Three of seven has quickly become my favorite channel. Booyah, shipmate. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, man. Thank you for your support. And if you don't mind, share it with some of your buddies. Bearded Double Alt coming in at $10. Appreciate all the work you guys are doing. Let's all remember Trump banned bump stocks and went right along with the crowd. He's better than Biden, but who isn't? Keep yeah. training. Stay present. God bless. Agreed. Good work. Good work. Yeah. Yeah. Manfred Comp coming in at $20. Please don't Dang. hunt Sasquatch. He is a brother, and when you see one, it's a consciousness event. Roger that, Manfred. We'll see about that. Might disappoint you. Travis Van S coming in at nine ninety nine. First John two fifteen. Thank you, Travis. Chili Jr. coming in Are at four ninety nine. By the way, this money is tax deductible because I stole your card. He's so grounded. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he's so grounded. Son, you won't. Let me go ahead and make a promise. You will not see Chili Jr. on the live chat next week. I'm, I can promise you that. No freaking cap. I'm coming in bussing. <laughs> yeah, bet on that. Bet. <laughs> bet. <laughs> you won't be on the live call, Chili Jr. Bet. Memphis, he ain't going to run errands with you either, is he? <laughs> Memphis Mac Daddy coming in at four ninety nine. Corn, is that hoist ointment still working on them tick bites? Believe that, son. Bet. Believe that. Oh, no, no cap. I bet Chili Jr. sitting at home right now eating fried eggs and cheese. <laughs> I guarantee you. <laughs> waiting on them, waiting on them empty boxes. Chili's gonna bring him here in a little bit. Yeah. He got you seven boxes, Chili Junior. You about to make a big fort, boy? <laughs> you gonna slide down the steps yeah. in them? Yeah, yeah. Got to pay that power bill. Go to the bank. That's right. Yep. You know what we do at the bank? <laughs> Chili Junior don't know about that. Yeah. You want to teach him? Uh. -uh. Uh. Let's see here. We got. Uh, muscled up runner Greer coming in at nine ninety nine. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. God bless and love y'all. Muscled up runner, thank you, man, and thank you for always sharing the the shows and stuff, dude. That means a lot. I mean, yeah, no. Why like the freaking only reason you can overcome this stupid censorship and algorithm, he, man? He puts awesome posts on Instagram too. Yeah, like he it does ain't good. no joke. Yeah. He does good. I man. love seeing his stuff. Steve Greer. We got Artie Rowe coming in at $5. Romans 5 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Artie. I hope you're doing well, man. Yep. We got the LV coming in at $4.99. No message? He put this like kind of little flashing character okay. that says try again. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Thank he you, does, LV. He doesn't always bless us with a message, but I'm thankful when he does. Garrick. Coming in at forty nine ninety nine. Good Lord, Garrick. I'm feeling that peace as I'm going through some struggles in life. I've never felt like this before, accepting Jesus into my life. Please seek Jesus. Yeah, good word, Garrick. Thank you, brother. Sheldon Hoyt coming in at five dollars. I ain't got nothing, but here's five bucks. <laughs> Appreciate that, Sheldon. Thank you, Sheldon. That'll buy Chili Junior some more fried eggs <laughs> and cheese. Rena Rain coming in at two dollars. Great chat. Thank you, Rena. Thomas Cornell coming in at six ninety nine Canadian. Appreciate y'all and everything that you do. Thank you, Thomas. Travis Van S coming back in at nine ninety nine. Only only language I'm speaking right now is Turkey. Believe mm, that. Yeah, I'll say no Travis. Cap. No cap, Travis. Yeah. Ch Chili Jr. coming back in at nine ninety nine. You said, freaking kidding me? <laughs> said I'm just gonna disappear like you did when I showed up. Dang, <laughs> Dang son! Ask him whose card he's using. He said it's yours. Well, no, it ain't. I keep track of my transactions. You using somebody's card, you're grounded, and you ain't gonna be on here next week. So go ahead and drop in all the money. You better. 
yeah, run the limit on that card because you're done. You better not talk to Tilly Jr. like that. They ain't going to run errands with you next time you got to go get stuff done. He's still you better learning. think about it. He's got a lot to learn, Blake. Yeah, you better think about it. That ain't how you handled that, Bubba. Disagree. Manfred Comp coming back in at $5. I appreciate your show message uh, and your message. Thank you. Thank you, Manfred. Thank you, Manfred. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah, guys. And thank all you guys for your just continued support. Obviously, we couldn't, we wouldn't exist without every single one of you guys who have tuned in um, and been a part of the conversation. Uh, subscribe to the channel. You guys who have supported us on uh, on the Super Chats, you guys who support us on Patreon, you guys who have come train with us, you guys who have bought a T-shirt, uh, you guys are the lifeblood of everything that we do. And um, everything that you see here is possible because of you and your support. And uh, it just amazes me from week to week at just the outpouring uh, of of love and and support that you guys give us uh you're unyielding and it's pretty daggone mind-boggling to me personally so thank you and uh, our promise to you is that we will keep doing the best that we can to uh help help the people who listen in some way shape or form and um <clears throat> spread the good word man we'll do the best that we can and uh thank you guys so much Nate the Great coming in at a dollar ninety nine. <laughs> By the way, I do have one more thing. If you ever wondered if Sherbet Green was a poser or not, where is he, man? Remember, he said he was back. I got on to him on the live yeah, call. Yeah, he show. told us he was back. Now he's gone. Yeah, Sherbet Green, man, inconsistent. Yep, flaky, man. Yep, flaky, like a yep. dang biscuit. All right, love you guys. Enough okay. said. Bet. Hmm. <laughs>